Welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 92 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing well. I want to say thank you to everyone who's joined my membership. I really appreciate the support. You all help me do what I do and uh, make this free podcast for everyone and all of this content. I really appreciate your support and I hope you enjoy all of my training and my extra episodes and things like that. Remember that if you want my specialized training, you can become a Listening Time member or join any of the higher tiers. And if you want my advanced podcast episodes, then make sure to become a Listening Time family member or VIP, and you'll get two new advanced episodes every month where I speak at normal speed, so you get the chance to practice with real English. And if you want to ask me your questions regarding English or language learning, then become a Listening Time VIP, and you can ask me questions every week, and I'll answer them in a weekly Q&A session. So, if you're interested in that, the link is in the episode description below this episode. That's patreon.com slash listening time. And remember to follow me on Facebook as well, because I post a lot of free content on there. I do live sessions on there. So make sure to follow me there to get free English content. All right, in today's episode, I'm going to talk about some different islands that I've been to. Uh, first, I want to point out the pronunciation of this word. Notice that the S is silent. So we say islands. There's no S sound. Okay. So I'm going to talk about some different islands that I've been to. Uh, just a few of them. Uh, I haven't been to many and so I'll talk about each one and about my experience there, and hopefully that will be interesting for you. Remember that you have the transcript available that's also in the description below this episode, so go down and click on that if you need it, and listen to this episode as many times as you need until you can eventually understand everything that I'm saying without using the transcript. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English to help this podcast grow. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, so let's talk about some different islands that I've been to in my life. So I'm going to start with the Bahamas. Uh, this was the island. Uh, I'm using island in the singular here because I only went to one of the islands of the Bahamas. Uh, so this island was the one that I explored the least. Uh, so we were only there for a couple nights, if I remember correctly. And we got there uh, via cruise ship. So we went to Florida, uh, my family and I, and we took a small cruise ship from Florida to the Bahamas. Uh, the Bahamas are very close to Florida. So it doesn't take a long time to get there uh, if you take a cruise. Uh, in fact, it's so close that in order to give us more time on the cruise ship, they actually just stopped uh, in the middle of the water and didn't move for many hours uh, just so that we could get a whole night on the cruise ship before arriving uh, at the Bahamas. So it's very close to Florida. And uh, these islands are uh, very easy to access. They're uh, great for tourism. 
and uh, there are a lot of things to do on these islands. However, because I was with my parents and the whole trip was already planned and I didn't get to decide what we were going to do, I had to just uh, follow their plan, follow their itinerary. So we didn't really do too much when we were there. We stayed at a nice resort, which was cool, but that's not really my thing. In English, we can use the phrase, that's not my thing, if we're saying that something isn't very interesting for you or it's not your style. So if I say, that's just not my thing, I'm saying, that's not my style, that's not my interest. That's not what I would normally choose to do. So we stayed at a nice resort, but that wasn't really my thing. Uh, I prefer to explore and go places and uh, see interesting things. But of course, a lot of people go to the Bahamas just to relax. And for good reason, because they have amazing beaches with really white sand. That's one of the things that I remember the most from this trip was that the sand was so white. And so during the afternoon, when the sun was high in the sky, uh, the ground, the sand was so bright that it hurt my eyes. I couldn't even open my eyes on the beach. I had to go back and get sunglasses because of how bright it was. So that should give you an idea of how uh, amazing the beach looks there uh, with its white sand and uh, the blue water, of course. It's a great place to relax. Um, it's a great place to just hang out and take it easy and not do much. In English, when we say take it easy, we're saying that you relax and that you don't do too much. You take it easy. So uh, a lot of people just go there to take it easy and just enjoy the nice weather and the white sand. Uh, so that's what we did. However, there was one other thing that I do remember that we also did that was a little different which was we went to a street festival. Um, there was a parade, actually, and I can't remember why they had that parade, but I think it was something to do with the island itself, maybe some historical event or something. I'm not sure, but it was a huge event. It was like a huge party. So many people were there. And the parade was very extravagant. It was really interesting. Uh, in English, when we say that something is extravagant, uh, that means that it is very amazing. It looks really uh, incredible and nice. And a lot of money was spent on it. Um, in that case, we can say that something is extravagant. So uh, this parade was extravagant. The costumes that people wore were incredible. And I think it lasted for a really long time because I remember that we just decided to leave early because it was already so late at night. So I assume that the local people there love to uh, party and have these big festivals and events that last for many hours. So that was the thing I remember uh, the most from that trip. Okay, so the next set of islands that I want to talk about is the Florida Keys. So the Florida Keys are part of the United States and uh, these are small islands off the coast of Florida, uh, the south of the state. So if you drive to the very south of Florida, you can drive to these keys over the water and drive all the way down to the very last 
key or island. So the big key at the top is called Key Largo, and you can drive all the way down to Key West, which is the end of the Florida Keys. And this is a pretty unique place because you're actually driving over the water, over the ocean, or I guess it would be the, the Gulf of Mexico, I think. Um, but you're driving over the water just on this like highway. And it's a pretty unique experience to drive over over islands <laughs> instead of fly to them or take a boat to them. So that was really cool to drive over the water and drive through these little islands. And of course, this is a touristic place, but you can see the local life very easily when you drive through the Keys. You can see the local establishments and you can see just the local people and how people live there. It's really cool. Um, it was an experience that was different from my experience uh, in the Bahamas because we didn't stay in a luxurious resort or anything like that. We just drove through the Keys, stayed somewhere, I think, we were in Key West, if I'm not mistaken. And then we uh, did some local things. We went to the movie theater. We went to local restaurants. And then we drove back. And so it was a more uh, local experience than our experience uh, in the Bahamas. And one thing that we did when we were there that was a highlight of that trip in English, when we say that something is a highlight of something else, we're saying that it was one of the most significant things uh, from that trip or whatever. So one of the highlights of that trip was going parasailing. I think I might have talked about this before in another episode. Um, we went parasailing uh, I think my mom, my sister, and I, yeah, uh, we went parasailing together, us three. And uh, what this is, is they tie you to the end of a boat, to the back of a boat, and you have a parachute above your head, and you're sitting down uh, on this seat uh, with the rope attached to you and the parachute over your head and the boat uh, starts going and then it tows you behind it. In English, when we say that you tow something, we're saying that you pull something behind you. So if your car has problems and isn't working, you need to call a tow truck, uh, a truck that will tow you to a mechanic, for example. So they towed us on the back of this boat. And of course, we were flying high in the sky uh, with the parachute over us. And it was a scary experience. It was very exhilarating, but it was very fun. In English, when we say that something is exhilarating, this means that it's really exciting and thrilling and it's uh, a little bit extreme maybe in the way that it makes you feel. So that was an exhilarating experience, but it was very fun and I'll always remember it. Okay, the next island that I wanna talk about is Cozumel. I'm saying this with a more American accent, of course. This is an island in Mexico off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. It's right across from the city of Playa del Carmen. And so first we went to Playa del Carmen and then we took a boat uh, across the little uh, stretch of water and we uh, went to Cozumel. And so this is not a very big island, but um, it's a little bit bigger than maybe some of the Florida Keys that I went to, uh, some of those little islands. Um, but this is a cool place uh, to spend maybe one day 
or even just one afternoon. So what we did when we were on this island was we rented electric scooters and we rode around about half of the island on these electric scooters. This was my first time driving one of these vehicles. So it was a little bit uh, scary for me at first, especially because I had my wife with me on the back of the scooter. And so I wasn't just responsible for my life, I was responsible for hers too. And we uh, drove on the normal street that went around the island. So there were cars around us. That's why it was a little bit uh, scary, I would say. Um, but I realized that it's not that hard to drive these scooters. You can get the hang of it pretty easily. In English, when we say that you get the hang of something, we're saying that you get accustomed to something or get accustomed to using something so that it becomes more comfortable for you. So you can get the hang of this electric scooter pretty easily, even if you've never driven on one before. And so we went around like half the island and this was a really cool feeling to be uh, riding a scooter in the sunshine with the wind blowing in our faces. This was uh, an experience that a lot of people uh, seek when they buy a motorcycle and they uh, want to take road trips on the coast, for example. Uh, it was that type of feeling of uh, driving in the uh, open air uh, with the coast right beside us so we could see the ocean and the wind was blowing in our faces like I mentioned and it was a really unique feeling so I really liked that uh, and that was uh, the first and only time I've done something like that uh, I don't like motorcycles. I don't like those types of vehicles. So it wouldn't be my first choice to rent something like that. But my dad really wanted to. So that's why we did it. Uh, but I'm glad we did because uh, I'll always remember that experience. So that was really cool to ride those scooters around the island. Okay, one other island that I want to talk about is Hawaii. So this is an island or a set of islands because there are multiple islands, uh, four main islands and some other minor islands. Uh, this is a set of islands that I know fairly well because I've been to Hawaii many times actually. Uh, I've had the privilege to go there uh, multiple times to multiple islands uh, with my family and I enjoyed every single trip that I took there. So Hawaii is a state. Uh, it's one of the United States, one of our 50 states, but of course it's an island so it's far from the rest of the country. It's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, but it's a place that a lot of Americans love to travel to. It's a great tourist destination uh, because it's a tropical paradise. Uh, it's tropical, so it's always uh, warm. It doesn't matter if you go in the winter or the summer. Um, it's always warm. Uh, it rains a lot because it's very tropical and uh, it's very beautiful in terms of its nature. It has a forest all around. Um, it's very green. It's very uh, beautiful in that sense. And Hawaii consists of different volcanoes. So this is a set of volcanic islands. I remember that uh, some years ago, there was a lot of lava 
coming from one of the volcanoes and that can of course ruin a lot of things and damage a lot of uh, places and so that can be hard for the people that live there uh, and it can be uh, a deterrent to tourists of course uh, in english when we say that something is a deterrent or something deters something else we're saying that it causes other things or other people to not want to go there or not want to do that. So it's a deterrent when people uh, hear that uh, Hawaii is a volcano and there's lava and stuff like that. Um, however, it's a great place to go to. Uh, it has many pristine beaches in English, the word pristine means that something is untouched. It's uh, like perfect in its original form. So there are a lot of pristine beaches and there are a lot of hidden beaches, local beaches that tourists wouldn't normally be able to find. And there are just so many places uh, to enjoy, uh, so many beaches to enjoy. And so I've been many times, as I mentioned, and I like all of the islands that I've been to. However, I have uh, some family members on the big island. The big island is, of course, the biggest of the islands. Uh, and uh, my family members, they're not my uh, first cousins, but they're my second cousins. Uh, they have a house on the big island and it's in a place that's very local. So when I visited them, it wasn't like being a tourist. It was like being in the local town, uh, seeing the local life around me. And they took me to uh, places that tourists have probably never been to before. So that was really special. Uh, I really enjoyed that type of experience when I was there. However, I also enjoyed the opposite type of experience when I went to Hawaii uh, when I was 13. Uh, I went with a friend of mine and we went to Honolulu. This is the capital of Hawaii. It's the only big city in Hawaii. So that was the opposite experience. It was very touristic. Uh, there were tourists everywhere, uh, but the city was very nice. The beaches there were also really cool, even though they were more crowded. Uh, but that was cool to see kind of the big city life, but on an island right? That was something pretty unique, I think. So uh, Hawaii, as I mentioned, is part of the U.S. So it's a U.S. state, just like any other state. However, you can see that it's very different in terms of its lifestyle, in terms of uh, how people uh, live their lives, how they think, how they act, how they interact with each other. It's a very different place. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it's just another state of the United States. So that's a really cool thing that makes it different uh, from the other states. It has uh, an island lifestyle, a different feel to it. So those are the different islands that I've been to. Uh, I hope to go to more in the future, uh, and I'm sure I will, but those are the ones that I've had the chance to go to so far. All right, we'll stop there for today. Remember that if you want my specialized training, you can join my membership, and if you want my advanced episodes, you can become a Listening Time family member or VIP, and if you want to ask me questions regarding English or language learning, you can become a Listening Time VIP to ask me your questions. And of course, remember to follow me on Facebook. Uh, the link to that and the link to my membership are in the episode description below this episode. And of course, you also have the transcript there. So go down and click on that if you need it. 
And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. Listening Time.